on that note, you've uh, you seem to come back to Rochester every couple of years, jazz festival appearances in 2017, 2019. That was obviously our last one. And uh, this one's ahead of the jazz festival, but it's a special May show. So we're kind of on to our sort of the bigger, bigger themed questions that I like to ask for artists. Sure. And the first is, uh, insofar as you have choice about where you play and where you want to play, you keep finding yourself coming back to Rochester. What Always. makes you, what, what about Rochester do you, do you like coming back to? Like playing for a Rochester crowd, what about it makes it special for you? Every time, I'm. this is my, I think, third time. Uh, but I remember the first time I went, I was on, of the festival, like you know, I was new on the scene, even though I had been touring for whatever 16, 15 years here and there, but I was new on the, the major scene, right? And um, I just had enough money to bring a guitar and a bass, you know. And and the next time it was like you know, confessions had come out, so we had a little more each time of represented a, a you know, a turning point in my not career, but my personal life as well. And Going back to Rochester, it always feels like I can I can look back at each gig and look at kind of how I've grown and learn from, you know, certain events that have happened, too, since then. And where was I then? And what was I, am I still acting with integrity to uh, myself? And and uh, <laughs> yeah, man, that, that last gig, the last time we were there must have been what? 2019. 2019 yeah. Early in the year. Yeah. Jeez. Three years ago. Yeah. It goes so man. much has changed. I was going to say it goes. It it is gone by very fast. I cannot. I feel like I blinked in between I January know. and now. It's gone by very quickly. And when you're, and like at this point in uh, one's life, the, tw- the mid to late, early, well, all the twenties, it's just exponential, you know, growth uh, in the learning experience. So it's amazing to share that with the audience and. Actually, I'm excited to even get to meet like Mark Iacona and all the people that kind of make everything happen there and properly thank them for all they do for this music. I love community. it. Uh, next question on the list, we, we more or less started the interview with your next projects. You said that you've got the next 10 years of stuff planned. Uh, what's like the next big thing you want to accomplish? What's the next thing uh, on the horizon for you? Um, well, I, I have been writing, I'm not going to go too much into it, but eventually uh, I would really love to get this musical that I've been writing, would love to get it um, made into a movie maybe someday or a stage production mm. it, off Broadway, who knows, man, but that, that's kind of in the next 10 years what I would like to do, um, as well as really explore this transgenre uh, concept, musical concept that has been going over pretty well so far as in terms of connecting all different kinds of audiences, you know, jazz audiences, rock and roll audiences, and introduce myself to new audiences and kind of start a little, you know, not movement that's a little too uh, pretentious, but you know what I mean, right? You know, like that. kind of explore this transgenre concept a little bit with my musician and see what the people dig about it. So it's kind of on the horizon for me. Sweet. And our last one, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? The advice I would give that has served me well my entire life is uh, tracing everything back to the source. Um, If there are artists, a lot of young musicians don't know, I guess, how to listen or what to listen for, where to find music, which, you know, ironic, right? Because in this world of Spotify and all the streaming platforms that we have, we have endless plethora of knowledge, musical knowledge at our disposal here. And it can be, you know, it can be uh, intimidating how to go about finding records, you know, um, especially because not a lot of people listen with other friends, musicians, which they need to be doing, especially if they're in a band together, listening together. But I always ask, who's your favorite, you know, who your, who's your favorite singer? And a kid might say, I love Fitzgerald, right? It's like, oh, great. So what about Ella do you like this and that? Who, do, who, now who is Ella listening to? And that's where everybody doesn't know what the, you know, they would say like, well, Louis Armstrong is not, yes, but other singers, like who's another, and the answer would be Connie, one of her biggest influences was Connie Boswell of the Boswell sisters. Uh, and then who are the Boswell sisters listening to? So keep tracing back this to the source and, you know, it's endless, like a tree with roots, you know, it just keeps growing and growing in all different, different directions, but finding your favorite artists and what influenced them can help 
inform your sound and even give you insight into your favorite artist and yourself and find that's a key thing in uh, finding one's own sound that helped me. So I guess that's something I would say, the young artist. 